And we begin once again in the Halifax area, which is now facing a double wildfire threat. A second fire broke out yesterday right near the edge of the Tantalan fire that has grown and forced thousands to evacuate. What you're seeing here is the response to the Bedford fire, burning just a few kilometers east of the Tantalan fire. As I mentioned, this is about 15 minutes from Halifax, and it's about six kilometers from the Tantalan fire, so it's very close. Fire officials say the Bedford situation looks good this morning for that particular fire, but conditions could change quickly, and both fires could spread quickly. In the Bedford community, people are on alert to evacuate within just 30 minutes notice. And the Tantalan fire remains a huge danger. I was speaking this morning with the mayor of the Halifax Regional Municipality, Mike Savage, who described the situation in the neighborhoods where the Tantalan fire has already hit. I have had a chance to uh, see some of the damage, uh, the randomness of the fire. And as our deputy fire chief said yesterday at a press conference when he was asked, you know, are these homes damaged uh, or destroyed? Um, I think what he said is they are gone. This is not something that is going to be done with in days or weeks, maybe not even months. It's, uh, it, these are communities that have been changed. Mayor Mike Savage, he and fire officials say this morning the threat from the Tantalan fire is still too great for people to return home, even briefly, and there will be no change to the current evacuation zone, but they are having regular assessment meetings. Now, here's the latest map that shows the wide area affected by the Tantalan fire. That purple spot there, that is the Bedford fire, and again, people are still on evacuation alert there. These are not the only wildfires burning out of control in Nova Scotia. I was speaking to the Premier of the province just in just a few minutes ago about the fight against the fires and what Nova Scotia needs now. The uh, massive fire like the one in Shelburne, you really need the air support. So anything from any resource that can, you know, drop water from the air, help with surveillance, certainly on the ground, hoses, pumps, you know, the list of, of things that would be would be useful and helpful is extensive. So uh, we'll be, you know, those requests are coming through. But I think the bottom line is uh, right now is it's we need some help. Uh, we'll look to the federal government. The federal government knows we need some help and uh, hopefully that they'll be responsive. So that part of the conversation I just had with Premier Tim Houston, he indicated that he's already had a conversation this morning with Intergovernmental Affairs Minister Dominic Leblanc, and there will be formal requests for various forms of assistance. Let's take you live to the command center in Upper Ten Talon. Brett Ruskin has been there all morning again, live with me as those officials gave the latest fire updates. Good news, bad news scenario again. Brett, what do you think of the main takeaways this morning? Well, that's right. Kind of a mix of, of messages of, of updates. We know that that Bedford fire that sent hundreds of people fleeing yesterday, late last night, uh, between you know five, six, seven into the evening as well, because that fire broke out. That. Uh, evacuation notice was then rescinded. People could go back if they wanted to with the understanding that they might have to leave again with 30 minutes notice. As we heard, officials feeling good about that fire. So we'll have to keep an eye on that, certainly. As for the fire here, the Tantalan fire, they are looking at uh, an increase in size to around 837 hectares. That's up from 788 hectares. That may have been a more um, progressive, gradual increase over the last uh, 36, 48 hours because the way that they measure it has to do with having a helicopter freed up instead of dropping water to go around the full perimeter of the fire to make that calculation. So the latest update, 837 hectares, that's the size of the fire here. Now, the evacuation orders still stand. The evacuation borders still stand as well, even though people do want to go back to their homes or to see what is left, what is standing, what isn't standing in these communities. Chief Dave Meldrum spoke about that at the news conference a short time ago. Let me be very clear that we are not changing the evacuation zone at this time. I cannot say if there will be any changes today. I would recommend that everyone anticipate, given the weather forecast that we have, uh, I wouldn't be making plans for a reentry today. If we could do it, wouldn't it be wonderful? We would.
And so again, that is the latest update that we were expecting the possibility or a reassessment by 9 a.m. today as to whether the evacuation zone could be changed. Not the case. No change to the evacuation zone. The 16,000 plus people who are out of their homes uh, as well as the 2,000 at least people out of their homes down in the Barrington area with that fire is now reaching a uh, record breaking size of 20,000 hectares uh, still stand that same evacuation border exists that same evacuation area exists at those two fires Heather it was interesting Brett to hear the premier just moments ago tell me this will likely become the biggest fire ever in Nova Scotia history and it is specifically that Barrington fire that they'll be going to be asking the federal government for some aerial support to try to get it under control with the huge amount of uh, hectare it has continued to consume uh, the message from the premier was clear in that videotape message to to people in Nova Scotia you know don't burn things you're not allowed to be out in wooded areas doing any sorts of activities right now there are provincial bans in place what are the most important messages that you're hearing from officials to the public right now Brett yeah so to expand on what uh, Premier Houston was saying he had mentioned in that news conference that briefing yesterday that there were six reported fires that were lit campfires or backyard fires or background fire mm -hmm. that, that despite the complete ban on fires. He said the fires need to stop. And in response to that, and in the response to the dry conditions throughout the province, he said the woods are closed. There is no activities or transportation or, or movement, no access to the woods to do hiking, uh, fishing, uh, hunting, uh, commercial forestry, commercial mining at all. That includes some of the urban wooded uh, parks as well, including Point Pleasant Park, as well as Shuby Park, some of the well-loved downtown parks in the Halifax Dartmouth region as well as other parks elsewhere in the in the province too but basically stay out of the woods and there's also the message to not undertake and do any unnecessary travel if it can be avoided so um, basically keep an eye on the news keep an eye on on the situation and the conditions and, and in some areas be ready to evacuate like we saw in that Bedford area Heather and, and Brett just quickly before I let you go um, Sure. Uh, Bedford, so close to Halifax, for people who understand, you know, just out along the shore into the basin, it's just right there. Uh, I'm just wondering, we haven't talked about downtown Halifax. Is there any discussion about risk to the major urban center at all, Brett? I mean, uh, yesterday, uh, I, I live in downtown Halifax, and a few blocks away, there was a, a condo or an apartment building that had a rooftop fire. So people were tweeting out pictures of flames and pictures of smoke coming from right in the core of downtown Halifax. Halifax fire crews left from where they were stationed to go and help and put out that fire. Uh, no injuries or anything from that fire. As, as far as we heard, they were put out fairly quickly, but it did create you know, a plume of smoke right in downtown core, whereas uh, previously we've seen these fires in the suburbs or elsewhere outside of the city. So uh, not saying no place is safe, but everywhere is dry, everywhere is hot, and uh, crews are very cautious just about everywhere in the province. Heather.